Greetings my dear students. Welcome to the class of teacher Meenal Pereira. In today's video, we are going to study about biotechnology. So, let's first see what is biotechnology. Now children, about biotechnology, we have already studied in 9th standard. And we know that biotechnology is bringing about artificial genetic changes and hybridization in organism for human welfare. That means whatever genetic structure we have. So that genetic in that genetic structure we are bringing artificial changes and hybridization. Hybridization means mixing two three varieties and this we are doing for the betterment or you can say the welfare of humans. Various branches of science like cytology, biochemistry, molecular biology and genetic engineering are included in biotechnology. So cytology that is the study of cells, biochemistry which relates with the chemical reactions that are happening in the human or uh, biological things. Then molecular biology that is at cellular level biology and genetic engineering. There is considerable progress mainly in the field of agriculture and pharmacy due to biotechnology. New experiments are being performed for improving the agricultural yield. This we have already studied last year. In pharmacy, experiments for production of antibodies, vitamins and hormones like insulin have been successful. High class varieties of crops have been developed through the technique of tissue culture. Okay, so tissue culture also we have studied and in pharmacy that is in medicine, it helps us in the production of antibodies that fight against the viruses, vitamins and hormones. Okay, so all these branches we will be studying in details in this video. Okay, now biotechnology includes the following areas such as Use of various abilities of microbes like yogurt production for milk and alcohol from molasses. We have studied this in lesson number 7. Use of productivity of the cell like production of antibiotics and vaccines with the help of specific cells. Use of biomolecules like DNA and proteins in human welfare. Okay, so as I told you biomolecules that is at a genetic level. DNA and proteins could be produced for human welfare. Development of plants, animals and products of desired quality by gene manipulation. To manipulate that is to change. Okay, so according to our requirement what we want, manipulation can be done and genes could be rearranged. Production of human growth hormone with the help of genetically modified bacteria. Okay, so not only vaccines but also the growth hormones which are responsible to bring about various changes could be genetically modified with the help of bacteria. Use of genetic and non-genetic techniques. Non-genetic biology involves use of either cell or tissue like tissue culture and production of hybrid seeds. Okay, so not only at the genetic level but non-genetic level. That is rather than genes, we are taking the entire cell or tissue for the new culture development. Okay, and we can also produce hybrid seeds. So, these are all the areas where biotechnology is useful. Now, let's see what are the benefits of biotechnology. It has become possible to increase the per hectare yield irrespective of limitations of cropland area. Now, India is mainly the agricultural country. Most of our economy depends upon agriculture and the monsoon and the other environmental factors are not predictable. So if we use hybrid seeds which does not depend upon the atmospheric changes, we can increase the per capita hectare yield. Expense on disease control have minimized since development of resistance varieties. Okay, so disease control. Uh, species we can develop because we have resistance varieties. Due to development of fast fruit setting varieties, yield per annum has been increased. Same goes for fruits and vegetables which are highly perishable. But the setting process of food set, fruit setting is very fast. So we can increase the again annual income. Development of stress resistance varieties 
which can withstand variable temperature water strains changing fertility of the soil has become possible so as i told you that the atmospheric conditions are never predictable so we need to improve such kind of crops that will withstand against all these or that can overcome all the temperatural or all the environmental problem so that is possible due to biotechnology because sometimes what happens is the crop is ready and maybe just there is too much of rains or there are there is a drought so the entire crop goes and then in that case it is a big loss for the farmers so we need to develop such varieties that let anything happens in the atmosphere or in the temperature or the environment it will bear or a person has to bear minimum uh, you can say that uh, the loss should be minimum of course it is not completely avoidable but we can minimize that now coming to commercial applications so in first as we have studied is the crop biotechnology which is used in agricultural field to improve yield and variety okay so yield is the production and what is the variety is different type of or different uh, we get different new new species so among that first we have the hybrid seeds genes of two different crops are recombined to form hybrids of various crops now in the previous in the video we studied about gene manipulation okay so here gene manipulation or hybridization is done where the two different genes are mixed and then hybrid seeds are produced and these are especially useful for fruits so we can have the better yield or better size fruits which will grow faster and where the fruits will not get spoiled by microbes then genetically modified crops or gm crops even about this we have studied in details in 9th standard okay so these are the crop with desired characteristics by integrating foreign gene with their genome are called as genetically modified crop high yielding varieties with resistance to disease like alkality weeds and other stress like cold and drought okay so these genetically modified crops we can use then two three examples of genetically modified crop is one is bt cotton okay so as you can see that in case of bt cotton and non bt cotton you see bt cotton there is no growth of microorganisms of the leaves okay and see the cotton is also a good quality rather than this okay so sometimes the bacillus or bacterium bacillus thuringiensis and it integrates on the gene of cotton and the toxin which is fatal for the ball worms was produced in the leaves and balls of cotton if the ball worm feeds on larvae the toxin destroys its elementary canal and the ball worm dies okay so we can use some better quality or seeds or bt cotton seeds that will give us better yield same thing with a brinjal bt brinjal so we can see here see the egg plant or brinjal and see the bt egg plant bt brinjal variety is developed by using the gene isolated from bacillus thuringiensis this improved the variety of brinjal kill the pest in the same way as the bt cotton does okay so within the the plant only or the fruit only has a ability to kill the worms okay so that the growth of the plant is proper isn't it amazing then we have the golden rice so a genetically synthesized or this is synthesized with vitamin a that is beta carotene has been introduced in this variety of rice as compared to normal variety this variety which has been developed in 2005 contains 23 times more amount of beta carotene or vitamin a which is very important for the growth okay so again this is the normal rice and this is the golden rice which is much more better okay than the normal rice then we have herbicide tolerant plant now we all know that weeds always affect the growth of the main crop if herbicides are used to destroy the weeds it affects the main crops too so whenever we are using artificial or chemical herbicides or uh, any pesticides it all it always affects the crop so due to this herbicide tolerant plant varieties of the crops have been developed due to this it has been possible to selectively destroy the weeds okay so this is the gm crop now weed is developed here so it is the it remains unaffected because this crop itself has some genes that will destroy the 
herbicides or that uh, sorry that will destroy the weeds so maybe it will have a very strong smell or certain uh, poisonous uh, properties which will not affect the human beings but it will affect and it will kill the weeds okay so the weed problem is solved here then we have the bio fertilizers due to the use of bio fertilizer instead of chemical fertilizers nitrogen fixation and phosphate sol solubilization abilities of the plants are improved so nitrogen fixation which is done by the rhizobium bacteria as well as the phosphate stabilization which is required for the growth of the plant that is improved so we can hear here that see here the rhizobium these are the microbes anabena these are the microbes and nostat and these are the azobacter now of course we cannot directly put the microbes there so what are these is these are the seeds or you can say these are the fertilizer not seeds exactly these are the fertilizers that has these microbes okay so automatically that will uh, that is going to improve what you can say is that is going to uh, whatever are the harmful effects of chemical fertilizers it will be avoided okay so the bacteria we are using like rhizobium azobacter nostat and anabena and plants like azolla are used as bio fertilizer so this is the azolla plant that is used as a bio fertilizer okay so a uh, chemical fertilizers we are not using then we go to animal husbandry we know that in animal husbandry we take care of the animals the two main methods that artificial insemination and embryo transfer are used in animal husbandry so artificial insemination is just like our ivf that we have studied and embryo transfer so by this we can have a better quality of animals it helps to improve both the quality and the quantity of the animal products like milk meat wool etc so we can mix the gene of foreign cow with indian cow and then we can get or an embryo which is a jersey we have studied last year so that gives a very good quantity of milk life is also long okay and we get good yield of meat similarly animals with more strength have more developed for hard work so strength of the animal can also be increased okay then the most important part is human health okay now about human health we have already studied in the previous video now let's see what it has to do with biotechnology diagnosis and treatment of diseases are two important aspects of human health management biotechnology helps to identify the role of gene if any in disease of a person diagnosis of diabetes and heart disease can become possible even before the onset of symptoms with the help of biotechnology so we can when the child is in mother's womb with the help of biotechnology we can identify any of these problem as such and then and there it could be treated diagnosis of disease like aids dengue can be done within few minutes hence treatment can be done at the earliest various medicines are used for the treatment of disease example the hormone insulin is used in the treatment of diabetes so either insulin earlier insulin being collected from the pancreas of horses however nowadays due to biotechnology insulin can be prepared with the help of bacteria so we don't have to depend upon the animal pancreas for the horses but it could be done with the help of bacteria in the laboratory for this purpose human insulin gene has been inserted into the genome of the bacteria various vaccines and antibodies are also produced in the same way okay so you all know that disease and treatment is very important factor of human health okay and then with the help of biotechnology we can deal with this uh, uh, with this you can say the uh, health of the human being so we don't have to depend upon upon any animal or as such for the production of hormone but it could be done in the laboratory with the help of uh, vaccinations or with the help of microorganisms now let's study about vaccines and vaccination what is a vaccine vaccine is the antigen and antigen means any substance that causes your immune system to produce antibodies against it now children you all know about your immune system 
we have the immune system which produces antibodies to fight against any virus or bacteria or any pathogen that is entering in our body. So basically vaccine is an antigen containing material given to acquire either permanent or temporary immunity against a specific pathogen or disease. Pathogen means disease causing microorganism. Traditionally, vaccines are prepared with the help of pathogens. This we all know. What happens here is, completely or partially killed pathogens were used as a vaccine. Okay, so we used to use or uh, you can say pathogens that were completely or partially killed and that used to inject in a body. However, due to this, there were chances of contracting the disease in case of some person. Now you never know because when you are injecting pathogens in your body, though it is in completely or partially dead state, it may not act so accurately for a specific person. It could cause problem in that person. So that was always a risk. So scientists were able to find now or they were trying to find alternative for this. And what is the alternative is, instead of injecting the pathogen in the body or disease causing microorganism in the body, now let's see what they are injecting. Okay, and they could do this with the help of biotechnology. Now, what this purpose, scientists produce the antigen in the laboratory with the help of gene isolated from the pathogen and use it as a vaccine. Okay, so you can see in the diagram children, this is a disease causing bacteria or pathogen. Okay, now this pathogen has an antigen. Okay, now this is the gene that this pathogen is produced to fight against the disease. So what the scientists did, they removed this antigen from the pathogen and in the laboratory with the help of these genes they produce a antibody okay and a different antibody will be made from this antigen okay so from this antigen that is they remove from the pathogen and they in the laboratory they produce a new antibody and that is called as vaccine and thus safer vaccines are being produced now proteins which act as an antigen are injected in the pure form instead of injecting the killed or semi-killed pathogens. Okay, so instead of injecting the killed pathogen, we are injecting proteins in the pure form. These proteins keep the person away from the disease by keeping the immune system active. Thus, injecting the antigen is the safest way in vaccination. Vaccine produced with the help of biotechnology are more thermostable. That means temperature does not affect them much and remain active for a longer duration. Example, vaccine of polio, hepatitis and as we all are waiting for the vaccine of corona. Hope to get it fast. Now, let's go to a new concept that is called as edible vaccine. Okay, so isn't it amazing? Edible means something that we can eat and that is in the form of vaccine. Now children, usually vaccine is in the form of injection or some bitter medicine. Okay, so we always feel bored or for injection of course we get scared to take an injection. Okay, so scientists are trying what if these vaccines they could put in some food stuff that we can eat. Okay, and that gives rise to what is edible vaccine. Okay, and what the scientists are doing here is, what you can see is isolation of the desired gene from human pathogen. Okay, so that pathogen gene is removed. Okay, then it is injected in plant. Now here they have taken the potato plant. Okay, so they have injected the gene into that potato then virus affect the piece of potato leaves. Okay. Then entire plant is developed from the leaf piece containing gene of human pathogen. Okay. Now you know that in case of potato, the reproduction takes place by budding. Okay. So these are the buds. And then from the bud, the new potato plant is developed. 
and then consumption of raw potato helps to develop the immunity so what potato we are getting from this which are also called as transgenic potatoes if we consume the potatoes then we can develop the immunity system okay so as i said that these potatoes are transgenic potatoes and they act against bacteria like vibro cholerae which causes cholera and iskeller coli okay so that those causes intestinal disease okay and if we consume this raw potato it generates the immunity against cholera and the disease caused due to e coli but what is the disadvantage here now obviously you all know that we cannot eat raw potato potato is not a vegetable that has to be eaten raw so what we'll do we will cook the potatoes and you all know that when we cook the potatoes due to high temperature the microorganisms or pathogens in that are killed okay so then that vaccine is of no use so now scientists are trying that instead of potato they could put into something or those vegetables that we can eat raw like cucumber or tomato then in that case it would be better okay so then we might get a vaccine in the form of our favorite maybe chocolate okay so let's see now next is it is used in the treatment it is also used for the production of hormones like insulin which is used for diabetes then somatotrypin now this is a basically hormone that is for the uh, you can say the for the growth of the growth hormone or pituitary gland makes the growth hormone and somatotropin is a growth hormone so what happens is if too much or less growth hormone is there then the growth is stunted if it is more then the growth is stop oh, sorry more then it has to be in right amount then we have interferons which is a group of small size protein molecule used in the treatment of viral disease It's very similar to antigen so these are produced in our blood but nowadays with the help of biotechnology transgenic e coli are used for the production of interferon and the interferons looks similar to this okay not exactly like this but uh, this is very similar to this looks okay so then very similar to vaccine this interferons are there then we have the gene therapy okay so what is a gene therapy is you all know that our body is made up of dna okay and dna is a sequence of gene now you all know that all the information of our body is coded on the gene now suppose this piece of gene is defective it is having some disease now before the birth of the child if we could remove this piece of gene then what will happen ultimately along with the defective gene we can also remove the disease or at least the disease could be treated okay so this is a very revolutionary new concept genetic reformation okay or gene therapy where we can actually remove or uh, some kind of problematic gene or genetic disorders could be treated okay so this happens in case of somatic cells and that is due to biotechnology you all know that somatic cells are all the cells of the body except the reproductive cells now example disease like phenylketonuria which arises due to genetic changes in the liver cell what are the symptoms is it can lead to intellectual disability behavioral problem and mental disorders okay so these are some diseases which after the birth very difficult to treat okay you know that mental disability cannot be treated so then with the help of gene therapy it is now possible to treat this disease and this method is called as somatic cell gene therapy and all the cell except the sperm as i told you are somatic and it could be used for the gene therapy okay so biotechnology is very vast children if we use it in a proper way it is really a boon to human beings then cloning you must have heard about cloning 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 is a production of replica of any cell or organ or the entire organism okay now cloning is usually done in case of animals and plants for human beings cloning is not allowed we have other methods that we have studied like ivf or surrogacy by that we can give birth to human but cloning is bad in case of human being okay so again there are two types one is reproductive cloning so what is happening here is somatic cell gives the desired gene okay so here this is the nucle uh, this is the somatic body cell and this is the egg cell nucleus is removed now this egg cell is fused with this nucleus and then ultimately a clone is made 
and that clone could be put in a surrogate mother. Okay, so this clone can be produced by fusion of nucleus of somatic cell with the n nucleated ovum of anybody. Okay, so this is any cell and this is a egg cell. One reproductive cell is required. Thus, there is no need of sperm to produce new organism. It could be just done with the help of egg with any cell of the body. Then we have the therapeutic cloning, okay, so which is used for therapy. Uh, the stem cells can be derived from the cell obtained from the laboratory by the union of somatic cell nucleus with the enucleated egg cell. Various diseases can be treated with the help of these stem cells. Okay, so as you can see here, this is the oocyte and the somatic cell. It is developed or removed. Okay, then here you can see the fusion and then the blastocyst that is embryo that we have already studied in the beginning of the lesson. And then from there these cells could be used and then we can, it is used for various development of body organs. Okay, so similar to cells, gene can also be cloned and million of copies of same genes can be produced. That could be used for different purposes. Then, how it is helpful? Controlling the inheritance of hereditary diseases, continuation of generation, enhancing the specific tendency. That is all possible due to cloning. Okay, now we have the industrial products or white biotechnology Various industrial chemicals can be produced through less expensive processes, for example, alcohol production with the help of yeast and sugar molasses. Okay, so that we have studied. Then we have the environment and biotechnology. So we can solve various environmental related problems with the help of biotechnology. We can, uh, microbes could be used to treat wastewater. Okay, this in very much details we have studied in the previous lesson. Okay, so uh, microorganisms are released in the wastewater. Then the due to treatment, they remove the toxins and the water becomes used or we can uh, consume, consume that water may not be for drinking but it could be used for other purposes so biotechnology plays a major role in the environmental by uh, you can say them sewage could be treated by this then we can have we have the science of compost again you all know that microbes are useful for the production of compost so the organic or degradable waste that we have it could be treated with the microbes and we can make a compost then we have the biosensors or bioremediation biopesticides biofertilizers biosensors are the device used to detect the presence or concentration of biomolecule in the biological structure or microorganism and these are some new concept in the biotechnology method okay so uh, instead of chemical we can use this biological related thing then coming to bioremediation means either use or absorption or destruction of toxic chemicals and harmful pollutants with the help of plants and microorganisms. Okay, so if it is used for plants are used, then it is called as phytoremediation. These are few examples. Different examples are given of bacteria and various plants that could be used to remove the harmful substances or harmful minerals from the soils and um, then it could be or you can say that it is good for the environment. Okay, so you can read this different example of uh, the either plants or bacteria. This could be genetically modified. And lastly, we have the food biotechnology. This also you have studied that food items like bread and cheese, wine, all this could be made with the help of microorganisms. Okay, and then last one more we have, sorry, DNA fingerprinting. Okay, so DNA sequence of each person is unique as I, as you all know. And then this DNA fingerprinting is a very uh, new concept, okay, that you have studied in 9th standard. It is used in forensic science to identify the criminals or any part of the body or found at a crime and similarly identity of father or any child can be established and this research is performed in the center of DNA fingerprinting. Okay, so all these are the applications of biotechnology as I said that it's a boom for us if we use it in a right way. Thank you.